beautiful day outside to worship the Lord. We're glad that you're here to worship with us today. If you're a guest with us, we welcome you uh, in the chairs in front of you. Uh, there's little small cards that you can fill out and drop that in the offering plate. That kind of lets us know a little bit about who you are and kind of get acquainted with you. We have a few things we want to bring to your attention today. Um, you'll notice a little flyer like this. It says the gathering. It's in uh, inside your bulletin. It just has a list of community prayer times. Uh, we meet as a community with the various churches combined together uh, to pray for our community, to pray for each other's churches. And so the next one coming up is August the 4th, it'll be at First Presbyterian Church. That's over. Hold on. All right, September 1st. I'll explain all this later. Um, Seventh day Adventist Church over here by Wells Fargo in Valley Manor. And so that's where we'll meet. Uh, 7 o'clock in the morning uh, for the morning prayer time, 5.30 in the evening for those who the morning doesn't work. And so just a number of Christians from around the community will be gathering to pray. We just invite you uh, to be a part of that. It was a good prayer gathering, prayer seminar last Friday and Saturday. 120 people were gathered at Calvary Chapel. We uh, learned some, some really good stuff from uh, Bob Allums, who is our, our leader, and just a wonderful time. And so... I'm sure I'll be here, you'll be hearing more about that a little bit later. Um, at this time, I'm going to invite Kim to come, and she wants to share a little bit about our ladies' retreats that are coming up. Coming up on September 10th is our ladies' retreat for the Western Slope, and that is going to be at Grand Junction this year. We Last year we did one here in Montrose, and we just did a one-day retreat and that's what we're going to do again this year. The registration is $10. You can pay at the door, but what I need today is a count of how many people are going, so mainly so we can get the food preparation. And the other thing, like, that, um, and so there's, there's still a couple of these out back that tells you a little more about it. But the thing, that to make it $10, we do a silent auction. And so what we do is, Everybody, we ask everybody to bring something new or gently used, and we auction it off, and that helps support our retreat. The other thing is, to make it less expensive, is the Montreal Church has been asked to bring desserts. So we are going to do desserts for approximately 50 people. So, so if I'm avoiding this section, I guess there's a few women added in there. But, <laughs> so if you want to go, let me know today, because we're trying to just get a count to know mainly for the people that are preparing the food. And I am really looking forward to it. Our speaker, I have heard her speak before, and she is really an awesome speaker. And it'll just be a good time for us getting together as women to just take, have a time of fellowship and um, hearing from the speaker tell about her experiences and how God really touched her. Thank you, Kim. If you have uh, any questions, just see her. Um, and especially if you're planning to go or you're participating with the desserts, let her know. Uh, that would be very helpful to us. Also, you'll see the Radiant Women's Retreat for the Colorado District. That's September 16 to 18. That's at Golden Bell. Uh, the cost and information is there. You register for that online uh, at our district at our district website. Also, there's another event that's taking place in our community, and that is uh, a food packing event. We did that last year as, a, as an association of churches. We're doing it again this year. It'll be September the 24th. Uh, last year it was at Montrose Christian Church and they, they packaged around 50,000 meals uh, that are put together. They're the ingredients are there. We put them together in, in things and they're, they're taken to Haiti and they're distributed among churches and ministries in Haiti who they share physical food for those that are there also of the Word of God. And so that's the 24th. It's from noon to 4, but this year it's going to be at Friendship Hall uh, on the Montrose County Fairgrounds. So that's noon to 4 on September 24th at Friendship Hall. If you have any questions, just uh, catch me later and I'll, I'll give information for that as well. At this time, we want to um, take an opportunity to pray in uh, three brothers to the ranch. And so uh, if you guys just want to stand up here at the front, we have um, Dan and Ron and Terry. And they're going to be joining the ranch uh, along with Shane and uh, CJ working there. They were looking for a good opportunity. So let's just stand here together. Yeah, let's, let's pray for them. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these three men. I thank you for the potential that lies within their hearts. And the potential
potential of transformation and renewal through the work of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for each one of the Lord, for Dan and for Terry, Lord, and for Ron. I just pray that you would just bless them. I pray that you would show them in their lives and their hearts that which you can do to bring hope to them, that you can break the bondage of, of the things that they battle with. Lord, I just pray today that they would experience renewal and restoration through the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's welcome them today. continue to remind you, one is, you may notice today that there were two sets of sermon notes uh, in your bulletin. Well, that's the Lord's fault. Um, oh, I just trust Him. We were, we were moving in one direction, had everything prepared, stapled into the bulletin, ready to go, and the Lord decided that it needed to be slightly altered to move to a different place in that chapter uh, to preach on this morning, so we have a different set of notes that are not stapled in. Uh, you get two notes for the price of one, but you don't get two sermons for the price of one. And you're probably thankful for that. So let's stand together and prepare our hearts to worship the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you today for your joy, for your blessing. Thank you for these uh, people that have come into your presence to worship you. And Lord, I just pray today that you would just bring us close to you. That your Holy Spirit would fill us. That your Spirit would speak to us, Lord, we might hear your voice and be able to respond to you. Lord, we ask all these things today in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. <clears throat> Thank you. 
about us as Americans. We are over scheduled. I mean, we have all kinds of things that are in our life. We, we have our work lives and that, that calls upon us and production that we do. We have um, our, our family lives and then the bigger your family, uh, the more stuff gets scheduled for your life, whether you want it or not, right, Daryl? Um, you know, get all kinds of things scheduled here because family wants this and this. Um, you have social life. You have people that you know, friends that you want to connect with. And you also have all kinds of other things on social media that say you need to be doing something. But there's no better place to be in the presence of the living God. To worship his name, to, to lift him up, to allow his spirit to flow through our hearts and our lives. For it is in Christ alone that we are able to to be able to find hope and a future. And when we focus our hearts on him, he arranges everything else. Amen. Kathy. His name, King and Lord, Lord. Amen. 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 You know, and for those of you that, that, that haven't been part of our church for a while, Catherine has been battling heart issues. Um, she then was diagnosed with COVID and has overcome that. And uh, I saw her uh, a week ago, and I wasn't sure we'd be able to see her in church again. Then this morning she walks in. And so um, we're just praising the Lord for God's touch on Catherine's life and for what he's doing. And just not only that, but just her testimony and her attitude as she worships the Lord. Um, it doesn't matter whether she's here or whether she's in her house. It's the same thing. She just worships the Lord. So let's continue to do that this morning. Let's worship the Lord today. In Christ alone, I hope is found.
still be my vision before we move on. You can be seated this morning. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer today. There are several uh, requests that are listed here. Um, many of you knew Dr. Jim Christie. Dr. Christie was our um, assistant district superintendent uh, through the church when I came on the district. Dr. Christie passed away. Uh, his services are going to be tomorrow at 1030 at the Woods of Life Church in Woodland Park. Um, if you would like to be able to see that service and aren't able to attend, uh, they will be streaming that service on their website. And so uh, I can get that information to you so you'll be able to, to click on that and watch the service in memory of Dr. Christie. Um, and continue to pray for Catherine. We thank the Lord for his touch upon her this week. Uh, she continues to bring God's prayers and God's touch. I know she appreciates those. So let's continue uh, to pray for her today. Also, uh, Judy Pratt has been struggling with issues of her eyes. Also, she uh, has been battling COVID as well. So we want to keep Judy in our prayers. Um, several others listed here. I'm just going to list several names. Isaac is going to have Isaac with us today uh, as well. And, and for Tom Wood, uh, for Jenny, for Judy Rizzillo, for Analia, Olivia, uh, Bob Shalene, uh, Riker Garza. Uh, we thank the Lord that, that he is in remission. Uh, for Marie, for Kirsten Wackley, who is um, walking through cancer as well. Uh, Christy Young. Kim Crandall Holtmeyer is beginning her uh, chemo treatment for the multiple myeloma that she's been diagnosed with. And so we want to keep uh, Dawn in prayer today as well as Suzanne Dodge. Um, for Phil and for Mark, uh, Carla's family. Also, Mark Runner, you may have heard me pray for Mark before. Mark Runner um, is a pastor at our Hope House in the church in Fulton. And Mark uh, has been in a long battle with COVID, uh, with, with COVID and cancer, actually. At all kind of extent, Mark. The latest on Mark was that they did a scan, and Mark is cancer free. And we praise the Lord for that today. But he will be going, undergoing some surgery now to correct the damage that the cancer caused. And so it's going to be uh, a fairly long surgery that's coming up, and you'll see the uh, information there. So we pray for Pastor Mark. Uh, as he says, his hope is, is that they'll be able to do the surgery and make things right as to the cancer, and then also that once he's done with the surgery, that since there is no cancer that is there, they can continue then to farther and farther out the time to go after those good doctors. So Mark Brenner, pastor at Hope House in the church. Um, Keith Dow uh, is home in Montrose uh, after uh, the explosion of Hartman Brothers and all of uh, his, his physical needs are thankful that he's here today or he's home. Also, um, I want to pray for uh, the, the heart that um, their neighbor Jerry passed away. Uh, he was hospitalized and passed away this week. And so pray for Wendy, his wife, and for the family that God's comfort and grace would be theirs uh, in this difficult time as well. I'm sure there's other needs uh, that you have that are listed here. We want to continue to keep those in prayer. We're going to sing it for us today. And as we do, maybe you just want to bring these before the Lord. That's why we have these altars here in the church. It's a place to come and meet God and bring those needs before him. And so if you'd like to do that, feel free to come as we sing together. <laughs> Thank you. 
charter of the Lord will give it back to you. And we allow you today, Lord, to, to lead and direct our lives. Lord, you have called us to ask six times in your golden word to your disciples in John 14 and 16. You, you invited us to ask. So, Lord, today we ask for you to these people for whom we pray. Lord, we ask for your healing in their lives. If they're battling with cancer, we pray that you remove the cancer. If you, they're battling with COVID, we pray that you would take the virus out and destroy their health. If they're battling with other kinds of things, heart issues and various things, we pray that you would heal their bodies. Lord, you are the great physician. You read in your word that you touch lives and you heal bodies and you restore people to life. We pray for that, for these for whom we pray in Jesus' name. Lord, we also pray today for your comfort for those who have passed away. We think of Jerry's family today, and we pray, Lord, that you would comfort Wendy, uh, be with Jim and Deb as they care for the neighbor and as they pray for them, Lord, come alongside. Let us pray you that your comfort and your peace would be there. And Lord, I pray that in the midst of this darkness, Lord, that you would be seen and that you would be lifted up. Lord, that you would pray that you would be promised and walk through the valley of the shadow of death with us. And so Lord, we pray today that you would walk with this family through the valley of the shadow of today. And Lord, we pray today that you would meet up with these foolish party and teachers are gathering with their classmates in their, their classrooms. And Lord, they're beginning to, to, to shape and nurture their young minds and then their care. Lord, we pray that your spirit be present in our schools, whether it be a private school or a public school, we pray that your spirit would go where only you can go. Be with all those who serve you in the midst of our school system. Lord, we pray that you give them wisdom that you give them courage, you give them boldness, and Lord, might they be able to just lift you up in the midst of that school system, Lord. We pray also for the students, Lord, as they begin this walk of, of education, Lord, I pray some are just kindergarten, are just beginning for the first time, and others that are, are in high school and college, and Lord, I just pray for every student that you would guide them by your spirit, especially those who know you. Lord, might they be lights in the midst of their classes, might they be lights in the midst of their friends? Lord, might they just shine for you in the midst of this upcoming school year? Lord, we pray that you would be with and train and for those who are worshiping you today. Lord, we know as we gather here and we don't hear cans and we don't hear planes and all those kind of things, Lord, we can gather in the quietness of our, our sanctuary and worship you. Lord, we know there are those in that war-torn country that are worshiping you as a Lord. Lord, they don't know whether the next day is going to bring the destruction of their homes or their families. So, Lord, I pray that you would be with the Ukrainian Christians as they work to you on this very difficult day. Be with those as well in Russia. Uh, Lord, who know you and are walking with you, I pray that you be with them. May your spirit bring an end to this conflict. And, Lord, may you guide those who are in charge of those kind of things. So we would give it to you. Now, Lord, we ask you to be present with us today. We ask you to fill our hearts with your spirit. We ask you to touch our minds that might hear and understand your word. Lord, just draw us close to you as we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. At this time now, we'll dismiss our children and our youth to go to their, uh, their classrooms and their teaching. And so they'll be dismissed today. And while they're being dismissed, uh, we're going to invite our ushers to come. And we're going to receive this morning's tithes and offerings. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, you give good gifts. Every good and perfect gift comes from you. So Lord, now we return to you a portion of those gifts. That through us and through your church, you might bring glory and praise to your name. And draw people into your kingdom. We pray this in Jesus' name.
invite our scripture readers to come over to the reading of God's Word. Testament reading today is out of Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my strength come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forever. says what's in your hand that's where we're headed so this is what the Lord I think wants to share with us today this morning so um, if you have your Bibles turn to Matthew 25 we'll get to it here in just a moment and it'll probably be helpful to you if you have it just to, to stay in that passage right there uh, we'll have a few other passages around that will show up on the screen uh, as long as the computer uh, doesn't work I've learned that I, I'm not a fan of Bill Gates um, at least Microsoft when they throw updates on Sunday morning they just, just not my fan uh, but we were able, I think, to get that accomplished. When I was a young man, um, I learned to drive in a 1970 Chevy Impala. Uh, I liked it. It had a 444 barrel carburetor. I mean, that thing could go. Um, it's the only car that I've ever had up over 100 miles an hour. Um, I was um, coming back from working. I was stacking hay. Uh, that's how I kind of made money as, as a young man. I would make money stacking hay. If I was hauling hay with somebody, I'd put hay in a barn. And we got done, and we had our FFA barn warming that night. And so I needed to get quickly from where I was stacking hay to the house so I could get ready to go pick up the young lady that I was taking to the barn warming. Um, now, I didn't have to drive over 100. But I knew a place where I could. And so I got out there and I opened that thing up and I got to about 105, 107, somewhere in there. But I knew coming up quickly was a turn and so I backed out of it so that I wouldn't you know, just shoot off the edge of the curb and not make the bar warming because I was in an accident. Uh, I tried to at least make that good decision. 
that car we drove around a lot. It was a family car that we had and we used it, but we lived on a farm and, and, and vehicles on a farm uh, get used for various purposes. Some of those are used to go to drive in town and do those kind of things. But if you need to do something, they can also be transformed into farm vehicles. My dad had the pickup. My dad was gone somewhere else in feed. He needed to go from where he had been delivered up near our house down to the barn, which is a little bit further down the road. So I said, well, you know what? That car has a trunk, and that feed will fit in the trunk. So I went up there, and I got the, the, the feed all loaded up, and I got it in the car, and I had to go around a corner, through a gate, and then back down, almost like a 180 turnaround to get back down that pasture down to where the barn was. So I'm driving along, and I come up to that gate, and I should have swung out and came in square. I didn't. I tried to get through there, and unfortunately, I caught the trim of the car on the post of the gate. And I heard it as it scraped off the side of our car. Not my car. My dad's car. <laughs> So I got the feed where it was supposed to be, and I tried as best as a high schooler could do to get the trim straightened out on the side of the car, and then I, I, I went back to the house and hoped Dad would notice. Now, you know better than I do. Dad was going to notice. In fact, I talked to my mom and told her, and she said, yeah, when Dad gets home, just be ready. So Dad came home. And I had to give an accounting for why there was messed up trim on the side of his car and why it's going to have to go into the shop and how that I was going to have to take care of that out of the earnings that I had from the hay that I stacked. It's accountability. It's what happens. You, you do something and something comes into your life and you're responsible for something, uh, then you need to take care of it. And that's the scripture that we're going to look at today. There's a man who is going on a journey. And this man entrusted his wealth to his servants. And they were given it to them. It doesn't tell us exactly what the instructions were. It just simply says in verse 14, he entrusted his wealth to them. But let's read the scripture today. Again, it would be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold, and see, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrust me with two bags of gold. See, I've gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Now, the next guy. He maybe wasn't quite as anxious to come to the master. He said, the man who received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I know you are a hard man. Harvesting where you've not sown, gathering what you've not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. So here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I've not sown and gather where I've not scattered. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the banker so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him who give, and give it to the one who has ten bags. And whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I want us to take a second and set this passage in the middle of where it's at in the scripture. 
You see, there are several other parables that Jesus tells in this process as he talks about what I already have in my other sermon notes, his return, when he's going to come back and, and return to, to this earth. And so he talks about the ten virgins, and he talks about the five wise ones who had their lamps ready to go, and the five foolish ones who let their lamps go out and who were kept from being in the bridegroom's celebration. Then below the bags of gold, he talks about the sheep and the goats, and he talks about those who, who, who cared for the master and who, who, who cared for the poor and the needy, and, and those who cared for the least of these, Jesus said, you did unto me. And so they were blessed, and those who didn't do that were cast out into darkness. You see, I think Jesus is speaking in this section about we, his people, who've been entrusted with the care of his mission while he's gone. You see, Jesus was on this earth. He lived 33 years. He went to the cross. He died on that cross. He shed his blood that our sins might be forgiven. He was buried in a tomb. He was raised again on the third day. And now he is ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father. He's always praying for us. We can be thankful today that Jesus is always praying for us. But while he is gone, he wants us to carry on his mission. He said, go wait in Jerusalem. And when you wait in Jerusalem, you're going to receive the Holy Spirit. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and he filled and empowered those disciples. And they took off and the world has never been the same since. So now we go back to our parable. Jesus has left. Jesus is going to come back again. He's going to return for his people, for his kingdom, for his church. But while you are gone, he said, I want you to take care of my business. There's a passage there towards the end of chapter 24 that's just before that. And we'll start reading verse 36. Elizabeth, this is not on your notes, so just don't go looking for it. Um, in, in 24 verse 36, he says, But on the day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father, as it was in the days of Noah, so will be in the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and getting in marriage, and up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. This is how it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken, the other left. Two will be grinding with a handmill, one will be taken, the other left. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Now if you drop down to verse 45, there's this little parable that kind of sets the tone for what I'm going to talk about. He says, Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom the master has put in charge of the servants of his household, to give them their food at the proper time? So, so the master's kind of put these people kind of in charge to give these people their food and to take care of those needs. It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Truly, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, My master is staying away a long time. And then begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him. And at an hour when he is not aware of, he will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You see, that's what sets up the next chapter. We are the servants of God. We have been given the responsibility to watch over the people of God, to give them their food at their proper time, to care for them, to carry out the mission of God. That's our purpose. The problem is we sometimes get distracted. There's all kinds of distractions in the world. One of the things I was going to I was going to mention this morning, kind of introduce that other sermons. This is football season. Did any of you go to the football game on Friday night? Okay, nobody made it there. We lost. Um, we lost by a touchdown. We're, we're keeping up the tradition of a close game, but we lost that one. Of course, there was this other football game yesterday. The team from up in Nebraska that should remain nameless. Um, <laughs> who now has the longest streak of any Big Ten team of losing by less than one score. They've kept their tradition. Now, hopefully that will change. I don't know. Um, football is football. You know, one bounce of the ball, and it goes different. Of course, the Broncos did win. So we'll see now how that season plays out. 
That's just a few things that we can get our minds set on. We can get our minds set on a lot of things. There's social media. There's all kinds of stuff out there that tells me I need to be doing this and this and this. And of course, all of my friends are in Europe. I noticed on social media that all of my friends are going to Europe. Nobody invited me. They didn't say, could you come with me to Paris? No, I didn't do that. I get to stay here in Montrose. Now I've invited them here. Maybe they've come. Here's my point. God has entrusted us with a mission. And he has given us gifts to carry out that mission. The question is, what are we doing with what God has given us? What is in your hand? What has God given you that you can use it for his kingdom? Let me give you three quick points this morning. First one's this. Our gifts are God-given. Our gifts are God-given. James 1, verse 17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. What we have is not our own. What we have has been given to us. We need to keep that in mind. What we have has been given to us. We've been given life. Uh, I'm assuming all of you were alive today. I mean, that's my assumption today, that you didn't show up dead. Um, we have been given breath. We've been given talents and abilities. We've been given a mind to think. We've been given uh, things to do. God has given us wonderful gifts. And he gives them to us just as he determines. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 to 7 and down to verse 11. There are different kinds of gifts. The same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service with the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but all of them in everyone is the same God at work. Now, to each one of the manifestations of the Spirit is given for the common good. Then I skip to verse 11. It gives a list of gifts in between. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Why did I want to focus on that one? Don't look at your neighbor and say, I wish I had their gift. Don't look at the guy next to you or the gal next to you and say, man, I, I wish I had their life and not my life. I, I wish I had the thing that was going on over there. You know, I, I wish I just had it different. God didn't give me what I thought I should have. Did you hear that? Sometimes we get frustrated and say, why didn't God give me that? I mean, when I was playing ball, well, why couldn't he give me the strength to hit home runs? No, I hit about 185. You know, I wasn't a really great hitter, but he gave me the ability to field the ball. And through that ability, I was able to make the starting baseball team of our high school because God gave me that ability. Some of you sing really, really well. And some of you sing. <laughs> I don't laugh because I don't sing all that well myself either. Uh, I, and hopefully we can help you lead and we can worship the Lord together, but you know, there are people that just, you stand next to them and like, wow, they've got voices of angels. They just really can sing. But some of you can do math. Better than I can. Well, my wife has told me, don't do math in your head. It's not a good thing. My point is this. Every one of us is different. Every one of us has different talents. Every one of us has different abilities. But they're all given to us by God, and they're all given to us for the common good. It says in our scripture, Matthew 25, that the master gave the gifts each to the one according to their ability. He didn't ask them to do what they couldn't do. He didn't place in their hands what they were unable to do. He didn't say, go out and do this knowing they couldn't. He said, with what you have and what I've given you, you can do what I ask. With what I have, with what you have, with what I've given you, you can do what I ask. So if God is calling you to do something, Either he knows you already have it in you, or he's ready to give it to you. God is at work in your life. He gives you these. All of our gifts are God-given. And he's given these to each of us to use as he instructs, to use it for the common good, to use it just as he determines. So I want to tell you this morning, you're gifted people. You're gifted. God has given you what you have so you can serve his kingdom. But the second thing is we are responsible for our use of our gifts. We are responsible for the use of our gifts. If you look in this passage, you see the gifts were given according to their ability, and they were expected to use their gifts. The master went away and said, here's, here's my wealth. I'm entrusting that to you. Now, 
The Bible doesn't tell us he gave them specific instructions. Don't go do this project or that project. Don't go to the bank or whatever. He just gave it to them. And the understanding was what he gave them, they were going to use for his benefit. That was the understanding. And so that's what they did. They went to work and they began to use those gifts. What God has given us isn't always for us. Why don't you hear that again? The gifts God gives aren't always for us. You see, sometimes, you know, I mean, the state of Colorado was generous. Now, I'm not going to get into the politics of that, so just don't worry about it. But you probably received a check or are going to receive a check. Now, some of you are saying, and I could spend that a hundred times, and you have spent it a hundred times. But have you spent it on what God wants to give it to you for? I got some money here recently. It was just totally out of the blue, unexpected. And so, you know, Kim was ready to go check out online. I said, no, we got to pray about that. That may be that's not for us to use. Maybe that's to be given to somebody. Maybe that's to be used for a ministry. Somewhere. We don't know yet, but we're praying about it. My purpose to tell you this is, if God gives you something, he expects you to use it, but he doesn't expect you to always necessarily think for yourself. He says, who is it that you might be able to bless with this? How might you be able to use these gifts for the common good? Now, a phrase came to my mind as I prepared for this, and I, I thought about it, and I said, that's a tough one, but here it is. If we squander our gifts, we injure other people. If we squander our gifts, we injure other people. So what do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, it means that if I take what God gives me and I blow it like the prodigal son, or I spend it on my wants and the things that I would like to do, my, my selfish desires, as James talks about, and I spend it with the wrong intent, the wrong motive, because I've asked for it, but I didn't want to spend it on something else. If I squander that, I may have squandered somebody else's resources. I may have spent what God wanted me to give for somebody else. I may have, I, and I want to just jump in to somebody, well, you're talking about money, Pastor. Well, I am. It says bags of gold in the Bible, so you can't get away from that. That's what it talks about. However, God gives us more than financially. God gives us talents and abilities. God gives us the ability to work with our hands, to, to be able to do projects. Some of you are very gifted contracting and construction people. Others, you're gifted in different areas of life. I mean, Luann and Philip do a great job playing the piano. They're gifted at that. God uses their gifts to bless us as a people. And believe me, if Philip and Luann are not here, you will notice missing their gifts and might be injured by me singing. So my point is, whatever God has given you, whether it's a, I mean, Kim and this, her and babies, they just have this thing. I mean, just, her and babies just have this thing. If you're not using your gift for the common good, if you're not putting it in the hands of Jesus saying, Lord, what do you want me to do with this? How can I use this? Then you may be taking away from what somebody else needs. James 4, verse 17 says, If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. You say, wait a second, I didn't do anything bad. I didn't go out and lie or steal or cheat. But you knew the good you were supposed to do and you chose not to do it. And that's a willful sin. That's a sin we need to bring before God. Am I doing what God wants me to do? Now, I don't know that. The Holy Spirit, you have to have a conversation. It's, it's what he's talking to you is. But I know this. We are accountable for the use of our gifts. I was accountable for the use of my dad's car. He said, you could do what I, I asked him to do. He said, I'm mean, gone. You can use the car. He did not say wreck the car. <laughs> he did say treat it as you would treat me. Well, I didn't treat it well. And I was held accountable. If we're not using God's gifts as he's led us to do and the places he's put us in, then we are accountable to him and we'll stand before him like that guy that buried the gold. Now he thought he was doing a good thing. 
He thought he was doing a good thing. He thought he was going to protect his master's assets. And so he was afraid somebody would come along and steal the gold. So he found a nice safe place. He dug a hole. He put it in there. He buried it and probably put a rock on top of it so nobody could get into it. And when his master came home, he pulled the rock off. He dug it back out and said, here we go. You didn't lose a thing. And the master said, except the interest I could have had on the money. He, said, well, he didn't do that bad. He didn't steal the money. He didn't spend it on himself. No, but he was not thinking about the interests of the master. That's my point. If we've been gifted by God, we need to think about what would Jesus do? What is Jesus interested in? What's Jesus trying to accomplish? He's trying to reach a broken and lost world, bring people to Christ, bring people to salvation and transformation. He says, what are you doing with the gifts I've given? For you see, my last point is, what we don't use, we lose. What we don't use, we lose. The one who buried the gift had options. Now, I'm assured that the reason he got one bag instead of ten bags was the master wasn't sure what he's going to do with it. And so the master kind of hedged his bet here a little bit and said, I'll give him one and I'll give him an opportunity. But if he, if he doesn't do it, if he loses it, if he squanders it, then all I've lost is one bag of gold. These others, I feel a little bit better about the second guy. Of course, the one guy I gave him five, I feel pretty good about him. But when he came back, he said, take Take from the one who had one and give it to the one who had ten. Now, I can hear the fairness question coming out already in the back of my head. That's not fair. It's just not fair that you take away this poor guy's one bag of gold and you give it to the guy over here that had five and now has a ten. Why would the master do that? Because the gift was not for the person he's giving it to, but for the advancement of of the mission. And he said, I'm going to give you what you will use for my kingdom. I'm going to give you what you will use for my kingdom. And if you're just going to hoard it and, and put it over here in the corner and hide it under a rock and not really put it to work, then I'm not going to give you much. I'll, I'll give you an opportunity. I'll give you one. I'll give you an opportunity, but I'm not going to give you more than that because I don't expect you to do much with that because you're just not focused on me. You're focused on yourself. The person with five, he said, I think you're going to go do something. You're, think, you're thinking like I'm thinking. You're working in my world. You're trying to accomplish my mission. You see, when we look at what's in our hands, do we see it as something that God could use, or do we see it as something we need? Is it about me and what I need, or is it about God and his mission? Matthew 25, a little bit further down in this passage, verses 44 to 46. Then also I answered, Lord, did we, not, did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger in needing clothes, or sick or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. There's a comparison here in the end of the chapter. There are those who had the same opportunity on both sides, goats and sheep. The sheep saw the needy and said, we're going to help. We're going to do whatever we can. If you're sick, we'll help you. If, you're, if you don't have clothes, we'll give you clothes. If you don't have food, we'll give you food. We will help you as best we can. And the Lord said, it wasn't the needy, it was me. I was the one that you were ministering to. Same opportunity for the goat. They saw the same people. But their mind wasn't on the mission of Christ. Their mind was on their own needs. And so with their mind on their own needs, they simply kept it unto themselves instead of giving it away. And in so doing, Jesus said, what you didn't do for me, for these you didn't do for me. God has called us to fix our minds and our hearts and our gifts and our talents on the mission of God. He's not given us all the same thing. He's not put us all in the same places of influence. He's not given us all the same opportunities. That's very depending upon who we are and the gifts of God and how he's created us. But whether he's given you 50 cents or $5 million, the mission is still the same. Whether he's given you the ability 
a, a great pianist or whether he just says you can play chopsticks. It doesn't matter. The mission is the same. What are you doing with what is in your hand? So here's my question as I wrap up today. What has God put in your hands? Some five, some two, some one. All of us have been given something. All of us have been given a gift for the purpose of carrying out the master's business. What are we doing with it? And how are we using these gifts for the kingdom of God? Are they being used for the common good? Are they being used to bless somebody else? Are they being used to, to, to rescue somebody that's lost and broken? Or are they simply being used to make us feel better? To make us look better? To help us have the comfort and the stuff that we need? What are you doing with what God has given you? Are you blessing others? Or are you hoarding it for your own use? The issue isn't so much seen on the outside as determined on the inside. James said you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask with wrong motives that you may spend it upon yourself. What are you doing with what God has put in your hands? Let's stand together. Heavenly Father, this morning we pray that you'd help us just to assess what you're saying to us. Lord, what, what are you speaking to our hearts? I thought this, there's so many different conversations that you're having today. And those conversations are all about your goal, your purpose, Lord, your desire to come to seek and save that which is lost. Your desire is to care for the least and the broken. Your desire is to bring the gospel, the kingdom of Christ into a world that people might see you. Lord, how are we using your gifts to follow your will to accomplish your desires, that your kingdom might come in our world as it is in heaven. Lord, help us today to walk in that light. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing a chorus this morning. It's a simple chorus. It's simply said, Lord, you're more precious than silver. You're more precious than gold. You're more precious than diamond. You're more precious than anything else we see in this world. He is the most precious thing we will ever have, the most precious relationship we'll ever be in. What are we doing with what God gives us? If you'd like to pray, these altars are open. Let's just worship before the Lord and listen to what His Spirit is saying to us today.
Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, unless I drink it, unless I drink it, your will be done in my life. That's our prayer, to submit our ask to the will of God, to submit our desires to his will, so his will be exalted, his will be accomplished, his will would be done. So I want you to bow your heads quietly today and, and just simple question. What was the last thing that I asked God for? And what do you want me to do with it? Lord, we ask you today to fill us with your spirit. Give us the gifts that you see fitting for each one of us. Train us up in them and help us to use them for your glory and praise. For what you've given, Lord, we give back to you that it might be used according to your will pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you this morning. Bible study will be to my left.